Hello dear friends from around the world and welcome to a new tea class with me Stéphane Erler the founder of the Tea Masters blog. I founded it in 2004 and I'm also uh, managing the t-masters.com boutique where I propose, where I sell all the wonderful teas and teaware that I select uh, here in Taiwan. So today's subject is going to be Hong Long Mong the dream of the red chamber uh, this is the original book and uh, here i have it in um, french that's how i read it because it's uh, really very uh, sophisticated uh, classic chinese uh, and here is the reason why we talk about this uh, subject today because t parker Che Zhongxian, my tea master, uh, with whom I'm taking classes uh, about tea for now almost 18 years. He has a new book out. Uh, it's uh, this book, Hong Long Mong Xin. Uh, so it um, uh, talks about uh, Hong Long Mong, about uh, the dream of the Red Chamber, and but it takes the angle, the approach of only talking about uh, the occurrences of tea. And uh, what is really surprising in this uh, book here, uh, we have um, really hundreds of occurrences of uh, the character T. Uh, the author keeps on uh, writing about um, uh, about T and T wear also, because uh, his um, uh, characters um, keep on drinking tea. This was the good life of um, the rich and wealthy Chinese families in the beginning of the Qing dynasty. And uh, because there are, there are so many references to tea, uh, and uh, the tea that was uh, drunk was really uh, high, uh, high level, and also it was uh, so 300 years ago, some of the um, uh, characters used or some of the uh, teas that were drunk uh, are not so familiar to uh, today's scholars uh, and even to scholars throughout history uh, and um, there, were, there were lots of mistakes when talking about um, tea in Hong Long Mong and uh, so T. Parker used his um, knowledge about tea to uh, do a research uh, and uh, clarify all these instances where uh, the previous scholars uh, got it wrong and uh, this book is really quite long right? it's uh, 290 something pages long uh, and it has 20, cha 20 chapters which means actually it's looking at 20 uh, uh, specific occurrences of tea among the hundreds of occurrences uh, and uh, really talks about these 20 occurrences really uh, in um, in big detail now today I'm not going to spoil uh, neither this book nor this one but I want to talk a bit in uh, in general uh, about uh, about it and um, I also wonder if you have read it in the meantime because I've already mentioned it in uh, I think end of August or beginning of uh, September once. You can uh, uh, watch it, uh, that video again. And uh, yeah, uh, I think it's going to be um, still interesting for, um, for you to, um, to hear about it. So before we plunge into the subject, please uh, give me a like if you are on uh, YouTube to help the reference spread it around, share it with your tea friends so that uh, they also better get to know about me and, um, and tea. Uh, uh, let them know I've made other classes about uh, many other tea subjects in the past. And um, if you are on uh, Facebook live with me, stick around and at the end uh, of the session I'll be there to answer your questions directly and also give me a like that's uh, that does not uh, hurt um okay what um what else was uh wanted did i want to say before that uh no i think uh, we uh, that's about it so uh let's let's start with something 
Uh, uh, any feedback so far? Did anybody of you read uh, this book, The Dream of the Red Chamber? Uh, because I'm, uh, I announced I, well, I received the book uh, end of um, August and uh, I'm almost uh, through. I think I'm uh, at uh, chapter 110. There are 120 chapters in, uh, in total. And uh, what is interesting is um, that uh, this book is so monumental. Uh, in French it has over 3,000 pages that actually Cao Shui-Ching, who wrote the book, he um, actually only wrote the first 80 chapters. The last, uh, the last 40 chapters were written by one of his uh, friends and uh, close friends, who of course was really an admirer of uh, this story and wanted to, to write it to the end. Uh, so it's still very interesting to, to read the last 40 chapters. Uh, because uh, once you, you, you want to know the, the end of the story, um, you feel, even in French, that the, the style is a bit different, not as uh, refined anymore, uh, it's more crude. Also, the references to tea are less precise than uh, Cao Xue Qing, so really, uh, this also, um, uh, by contrast, helps to appreciate uh, the the work and the, the knowledge of uh, Cao Xue Qing because, um, yes, at the end uh, there are much fewer instances that are where you find it interesting to read about, um, about tea. So actually, it's a, but maybe this is a good thing for you huh, if you really want to focus on, uh, on the tea part in this book, you can st stop at uh, chapter, uh, chapter 80, but still the end is really interesting and um, it is done in the spirit of um, the author because, uh, and I'm not going to, and uh, yesterday when I wrote about it in my blog, I did not spoil too much by saying that at the end everybody, kind of, almost everybody dies uh, like uh, in a Godfather movie in the last um, uh, 15 minutes. Because actually this is announced in chapter 5. In chapter 5 you have uh, Jabao Yu who is uh, the young guy uh, who is uh, the main character kind of the of the book uh, and uh, he goes uh, in uh, a chamber and makes a dream uh, and uh, in this dream uh, he meets a kind of a goddess uh, a fairy uh, who uh, brings him to a library where he finds uh, some um, uh, papers where he can read in poetry the death of uh, his 12 uh, sisters and cousins uh, and all their fate. So very early in, uh, in the book, in the very beginning, chapter 5, you already know the, uh, about the end. So for the, the friend of Cao Xue Qing, he, it was easy for him to finish it because uh, thanks to these poems in um, the chapter 5, the end is already announced of uh, um, all this, uh, uh, this fall. Uh, it's basically uh, the story of um, not the wise but uh, the, uh, uh, the glory of a well wealthy family like uh, uh, Cao Xue Qing's family used to be because um, uh, as I said in uh, August his uh, grandfather uh, was a very good friend of uh, Emperor Kangxi and uh, when uh, already before Kangxi uh, acceded to the throne they went to school uh, had the same tutor uh, they were tutored together let's say and um, so when Kangxi became emperor he returned favor to his uh, good friend and um, put him in charge of uh, the silk and uh, therefore all the um, the clothes for the emperor and for his court. So this really generated lots of business, lots of uh, wealth. Uh, but when Kangxi died, uh, the, this uh, wealth was, uh, was lost. Uh, the new emperor uh, who acceded to the, to the throne uh, through um, lots of intrigues, even killings, uh, Emperor Yongzhen, he 
did not want to have uh, to keep the old um, friends of uh, his father uh, or uh, of Kangxi. I'm not sure it's, it's really his father. Uh, anyway, so he really made sure that uh, they became bankrupt, and uh, so uh, Cao Shiqing grew uh, grew up very poor. Uh, because his family knew this kind of a fall down, uh, bankruptcy, and uh, the end uh, of uh, the, uh, let's say the second part of the um, book is very interesting because you see how slowly and slowly uh, the family becomes poor and poor. Uh, in the beginning, it's it's a little bit slow, but at the end, uh, it's quite abrupt, and uh, this is really uh, uh, too much debt. Uh, so, this in these times of debt, uh, maybe this is also a, a warning uh, why uh, not to have uh, to be careful with debt, because it's once uh, these problems, uh, once you cannot repay, then you your downfall is uh, is very quick and. Uh, can have really tragic consequences. Uh, so maybe also that's why there's much less tea at the end because uh, they they cannot afford to drink uh, uh, good tea anymore. Uh, once you are poor and uh, everybody dies, uh, well, you only have your your tears to uh, to drink from, uh, kind of. So uh, where where was I? Um, well, uh, a very um, half autobiographical book and uh, half an invention uh, uh, for this novel. So, and also, it is written in a bit in a, in the shape of a, of a dream and a dream in, inside the dream. Because, of course, you understand that Cao Shuqing he 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 was writing under Yong Zhen, the emperor who uh, bankrupted his uh, family. Uh, so he had to be very, very careful not to upset the, the emperor and the censors. So he really took lots of care to, to, to say that, oh, this story has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with my family. It's a pure invention. It's so, so much of an invention. Uh, there are fairies, there are uh, uh, goddesses that appear. It's, uh, and uh, there's a magic stone. Uh, this magic jade that um, the main character Bao Yu is born with a stone in his mouth. So this is really this uh, incredible thing uh, that makes uh, the story totally unbelievable, but adds a kind of a, a poetry to it. And uh, at the end, uh, actually. Uh, the downfall has nothing to do with the emperor. The emperor is very kind to the family, but if they still became bankrupt, it's really totally their fault. Nothing to do with the emperor. Nee. <laughs> but so this, you, un you totally understand, he had to write it this way to avoid uh, being uh, censored. And, uh, so, and really, it must have cost him to, uh, to write this. Uh, he said, every character cost me a drop of blood because uh, he really the, yeah, when he writes about the good times you can feel already some nostalgia. Uh, actually, he did not, under, did, not, did not really live through these good times. It's his uh, grandfather mostly who, who uh, had lived through them and uh, told them to, to, to him when he was a child. So you feel this uh, already a sadness when, during the good times and uh, even a, a, a worse sadness during the downfall. So it's uh, really a, a very good book. Uh, I really encourage you to, uh, to read it. It's going to be a long journey. Uh, and, uh, but um, yeah, in, uh, in the winter time, it's uh, a good thing, especially if there are not so many nice movies uh, on Netflix. Uh, instead of a series, really should, uh, you should read this book. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Elizabeth, for the comment about the music. I know you like it. <laughs> um, and um, 
uh, what else? So let's uh, let's move on and um, talk a little bit about um, uh, about tea in this um, uh, in this book. Uh, maybe I should also start to make some tea. Yeah. Some bourgeon, but I don't want to make it too long, so... Uh, let me first smell some leaves and then I'll be able to to find some strength to continue. Mm. A roasted bourgeon yeah, from spring 2018. Ah, I start to feel salivating it. Uh, looking forward to drinking it. So, uh, I already um, gave one example, um, uh, so two months ago, you can go back in my uh, archive of uh, videos, when I was writing about the difference between Chabe and uh, uh, Zhong. Uh, and I, uh, because uh, sometimes the author uses Chabe uh, or Zhong in this book, uh, with the same uh, so we we saw that it is exactly the same item, the same accessory, but the difference is that Zhong is used in a in a more formal setting. Uh, Chabe is really used in the um, uh, more when it's about to drink to quench your thirst. However, when it's time to be polite and um, and uh, uh, bring uh, serve a cup to um, somebody who is older than you uh, as an act of um, uh, politeness Th that's when he uses the word jong so this um, uh, uh, is one thing that we already learned uh, from um, from this book thanks to um, thanks to T Parker now uh, let me uh, tell you also what um, T. Parker did uh, since he's a, a journalist. So he really went back to, um, to the sources. Like there is one uh, tea that um, uh, Wang Shifeng, um, um, one of the top girls in the uh, top women, young women in, uh, uh, in the household, and she's uh, managing the whole household of the family. So she's really in charge of um, a lot of people who obey to her. She's uh, like a modern CEO. And um, uh, so she's uh, like, a, like all modern CEOs, uh, very... Um, uh, she, she's about faith and she uh, wants to be respected and likes to also uh, marks of um, uh, respect and show her authority. So at one point she treats her cousins uh, and guests with Xian uh, Lo Cha uh, from Thailand. And she says, oh, this tea has been gifted to the, uh, to the court and uh, I'm in turn, uh, I got it from, uh, so, so she doesn't really say how she got it, but she says, oh, this is a tea that had been gifted to the court and um, uh, I'm serving it to you. Um, so this shows that uh, a bit like um, um, like today you want to have the endorsement of uh, somebody uh, famous or oh, this tea was drank by uh, Obama or maybe by Xi Jinping uh, or, or by uh, this or that uh, celebrity or uh, Michael Jackson or somebody not dead, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, uh, well, anyway, so that um, uh, in those times, really to say, oh, this is a tea that was a uh, gift to the, to the court, to the emperor, is a way of saying, oh, this is really a, uh, the top of the top, because uh, if it were not, it would not be uh, gifted to the, to the emperor. And the second thing is, you see, I'm so, uh, so strong, I'm so powerful, that I'm also able to get the same tea as uh, the emperor got. Uh, so this is also why, uh, uh, why sometimes you, you see uh, uh, 
well, well, many vendors are also very happy to give uh, tea to celebrities and hope that they are going to, um, uh, to feature uh, their gifts in their uh, social media. It's something I don't, uh, don't do much. Uh, I've done it more with, um, with people who are very uh, close to, um, to the food and uh, wine scene who enjoy good things. So sometimes I think, oh, maybe they should discover what is really good tea. And I think I've sent to a, a couple of uh, French gourmets. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I know there are some others who, uh, who will send their, their teas. To, uh, to famous people to, to hope to, to get them in their, uh, to get some promotion uh, out of it. Uh, fair game. Um, and, um, but what is interesting is that um, T. Parker, he, he did uh, uh, then a research about all the gifts from the um, Thai court to the Qing court. Uh, and um, because these records were kept uh, even after the um, revolution, after the overthrowing of the emperor. And um, he found out uh, that there were, I think, 43 different, uh, different instances where uh, the Thai court made, uh, came to um, Peking to uh, make offerings uh, roughly every three years. But he found in none of these uh, uh, official presentations did any tea from Thailand uh, got gifted to the Chinese emperor. This actually uh, is an invention by uh, Cao Xueqing uh, that um, the tea did not um, uh, go to China at least through official uh, means. Now, does it mean that uh, this tea doesn't exist? Uh, actually, um, most likely not, because uh, nowadays in Thailand there are uh, places where uh, you can find uh, tea made uh, very similar to poor at the uh, border between um, uh, Thailand and Yunnan. Uh, also close to, to Burma, there is a, um, a preserved tea uh, uh, where tea leaves are, are preserved with salt and are eaten uh, as, a, um, uh, as an appetizer. He thinks maybe it's this uh, tea, but for, for this uh, there is no, um, uh, uh, no evidence, uh, no no evidence that would uh, really confirm it uh, totally. Uh, but uh, we see evidence that um, tea was already present 300 years ago in this area. Uh, so it's uh, only half an, uh, an invention to, to mention teas from uh, uh, Thailand being, uh, being served in, uh, in Beijing. And it's also possible that uh, this tea came along with, um, uh, with a delegation from Thailand, just it was not offered to the king but, uh, or to the emperor, but it was uh, sold directly uh, in, in the shops uh, or to merchants, in, to Chinese merchants in the capital, instead of uh, being presented and gifted to the, um, to the court. So this is uh, one of the examples of um, uh, clarifications that um, T. Parker did uh, in, uh, in this book. Well, uh, I think uh, that should be enough for today, otherwise I'm, going to, uh, I'm not going to finish uh, all the 20 uh, instances about um, uh, tea that uh, T. Parker uh, examines in this book. Uh, I'm not proposing it because it's quite heavy and it's uh, really about uh, reading in, in Chinese, so uh, uh, even though there are lots of uh, pictures, uh, quite uh, always nice pictures in, in it, but if you don't read Chinese, then uh, it's probably not going to be uh, so interesting for you. And so, and first, you should read The Dream of the Red Chamber anyway. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll move to another subject next week, and uh, maybe we'll return to some uh, other uh, item 
about this book um, a bit later on. I want to give you time to, to read the book first and uh, then it's also more interesting to, to discuss it. Thank you very much. Bye bye.